What's up, everybody? This is John from Coding Addict, and welcome to another JavaScript Nuggets video. And today's video, I want to talk about some nifty properties that allow us to access the width and height of the window, as well as the function to get the dimensions for any element. And we'll start with the window height and width. And these two properties are actually located on the window object. So we can simply go with some kind of console log. And here I'll just add the height and I'll set it equal to window. And then the property is right on the window object. And we simply go with inner height. So this is going to give us the height of the window. So if you ever need to use that in an application, just look for window inner height. Again, this is going to work in vanilla JS, the same as with react JS. So let me copy and paste. And of course, you can already guess that next we'll go with width. And the property name is, you guessed it, inner width. And then once I save, check it out. Now, of course, I have the height as well as the width. So if I'll change the height by making my dev tools bigger, then of course, once I refresh, of course, now the height of the window is going to be smaller. And the same way, if I'll make the screen size bigger, of course, now the width value will also increase. Hopefully that is clear. And then a very, very, very useful one is the method by the name of get bounding client rect. And essentially, this is just going to give us the dimensions for any element. And if you take a look at the index HTML, you'll see that I have the button over there, classes BTN, and then I also have the box. Of course, box is located right below the button with these dimensions. So I have some kind of width height, as well as the background. And of course, the margin to the top is four REMs. And now what I simply want to do is target the button. And then once we click on a button, I just want to log the dimensions of the box. And of course, we can simply do that by going to the JavaScript file. And then we say BTN, then document, query selector. We're looking for the button. I'll right away select the box as well. So I'll say here box. And then let's add that event listener. So BTN and then add event listener. And we're going to be listening for click events. And in the callback function, we're going to set up a variable and I'll call this dimensions. That is equal to a box. So now, of course, I get my node and I'm going to go with get bounding client direct. And what you'll notice in a console, if you console the dimensions, all the dimensions for that particular element. So once I click, check it out. Now I have the bottom one. And as far as what these properties mean, this is going to be the distance between the top of the screen to the bottom of the element. Then we, of course, we have the height, which is 150, as well as the width 150. Then we have the left one, which of course is going to be this distance. And then the right one is going to be the distance to the right edge. And then, of course, we also have X and Y, and these are going to correspond to the top one over here. And of course, the X one is going to correspond to the left value. Now, it's also really cool. You can actually check whether the element is off the screen. So if I go back to index HTML, where I have the styles for the box, if I go with margin left negative REMs, and if I just remove this margin zero and auto, you'll notice that some part of the box is actually out of the screen. And if I simply just click on get dimensions, now, of course, you'll notice that the values for left and X are actually negative. So if they're negative, you know that element is off the screen. And again, this is really, really useful, whether that's vanilla JS or React JS, because you can right away get the dimensions of the element and then based on those values, do something about it. Whether that is some kind of scroll event, whether that is some kind of functionality where we hide or show elements. And in fact, if you took my React course, you probably worked on projects and you know that in there we use these properties and method here and there, especially in the projects where we need to solve more complex problem. 